Today, we are going to discuss ball bearings. Ball bearings are the most common bearing found in the world, but a subsection of them called deep groove ball bearing are the most common style and one that most of us will recognize. These bearings are so popular because the ball rollers provide a small contact point between the races and the rollers, which means optimal efficiency. Additionally, the shape of the ball with the deeper grooves in the raceways of the rings allow a deep groove ball bearing to handle both radial and axial loads. Because of the versatility and efficiency, these are used everywhere. The mixer in your kitchen, the previously mentioned skateboard, electric motors, industrial machinery, vehicles, and much, much more. Deep groove ball bearings can range from 3mm bore all the way up to 850mm. will always have a flat inner and outer ring, ball rollers, and can have an open design, shields or seals. Ball bearings are generally the only style of bearing that will use a seal or shield. Now that we have a basic understanding of the deep groove ball bearing, let's do a quick example of how we might identify one. A customer put this bearing on the counter in front of you and doesn't know the brand or the part number, nor does the bearing have any markings on it. Therefore, we know we won't be able to cross it and have to go through our identifying steps we learned about in the last video. First, we identify the potential style of bearing. We see the flat inner and outer rings and what looks like a rubber seal on both sides. Because of the seals, we cannot see the rollers to confirm they are balls, but due to the other two visual cues, it's probably safe to start with the most common bearing style in the world, the deep groove ball bearing. Now, we need some measurements and remember to measure in multiple locations that count for wear. Starting with the bore, this bearing would be 25 millimeters. Next, we want to find the outside diameter, which is 52 millimeters. And lastly, the width, which is 15 millimeters. Okay, we know our dimensions and we think we know the style of bearing, so we can now head to our catalog to hopefully find our bearing part number. Let's head to the nomenclature section. The series code is determined by the dimensions of the bearing, so you will have to go into the charts that follow, which are organized by bore, smallest to largest, then OD, then width. Using the measurements we took, we can scan quickly for a bore size of 25 millimeter, and there are five different options. Using our OD and the width measurements help us narrow it down to the series and bore code 6205. This is the base code of our bearing part number to which we can build the rest off of. Next is the common suffixes. A good rule to follow when looking at nomenclature is if you cannot identify the feature on the bearing, do not add it to the part number. Therefore, as we cannot see our rollers or cage and the color of the rings tell us they are not brass, we will not be adding anything from this section to our part number. Continuing on, we have our closures and features. As we cannot see our rollers, we can conclude that we have a closure of some kind and to help us determine what it is, let's head into the engineering section of the catalog to get more information on the options available. After looking at the table, we can now see that we have a seal as the material is rubber and not steel. There is a non-contact option, which means the seal only contacts the outer ring and a contact option which means the seal contacts both the inner and outer rings. We do not have a gap between the inner ring and the seal, so this would be a contact seal, which makes sense as this style of seal gives us the best resistance to contamination and washout and is the most common one found in the marketplace. Lastly, we can see a seal on both sides of the bearing, therefore we can add 2RS to our part number. Finally, we have the RIC and special features. Again, we do not add this to the part number code unless the information from the customer 
or our eye check can confirm either of these are present. With all the information we have, we have landed on part number 6205-2RS, which we can grab from stock and confirm it matches our sample. Now, deep groove ball bearings are not the only kind of ball bearing. As the world of rotational forces has become more complex and demanding, the intricacies and number of features and modifications has expanded. Therefore, if we do not find our bearing in the deep groove ball bearing catalog, do not be discouraged. We can head on over to our standard ball bearing catalog where we can find ball bearings with flanged outer rings, inner or outer rings that are wider, several different styles of seals and shields, and even hex bores. Measurements will be similar but not identical, and the nomenclature is different but follows the same set of rules as the example we just went through. There's also another catalog available called the Angular Contact Ball Bearing, which is very similar to a deep groove ball bearing, but the raceway walls will have different angles to allow for higher axial load tolerances. Hopefully you didn't get spun around with all that information, but if you take your time, you'll definitely be able to get your bearings. Thanks for rolling through this video with us today, and be sure to check back often as we continue our in-depth dive into the revolving world of bearings. Now, just like our 100% Canadian company, let's keep rolling into the future. See you next time.